Adam. He died at 930 years old because he kept track of how old he was. That's right, Adam died at 930 years old. We're going to bring that up casually and pretend that it's true and nobody's going to say a single thing. I urge you, I encourage you, do it over Christmas. Do it as a Christmas celebration. Read the Bible cover to cover. Atheist tells everyone to read the Bible for Christmas. That's a headline. <laughs> Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel, my name is Emma, welcome if you are new. I love Christmas. I love it. Okay, the day itself can be a bit stressful depending on how many people are around, but I love buying people presents, I love roast parsnips and flashing colourful lights. Christmas is amazing, it's one of my favourite times of year. It's even, it's even, it's even snowing right now in London. It's a Christmas miracle. Today I'd like to bring my own perspective to a couple of questions that crop up around the festive season. The first of which should be pretty brief. Should non-Christians celebrate Christmas? First of all, it's important to remember that December is a holiday season not just for Christian celebrations. You have Hanukkah, you have Kwanzaa, you have Yule. There's no reason people from those different religions can't all celebrate together and have a merry December time. While the central theme of Christmas Day itself is obviously the birth of the little baby Jesus, Christmas as a holiday is largely secular now. It's become a global, cultural and commercial phenomenon. It just has. In this country, Christmas and the days around it are national holidays, so unless you are unfortunate and working in uh, uh, food retail or something like that, bless you, I hope you get lots and lots of tips and good overtime, you get those days off, so naturally, people engage in Christmas traditions of celebrating with family and cooking a big meal, and Christmas has become symbolic for the time of giving. It's a time of altruism. It's a time where we are particularly dedicated to giving to charity and helping those in need. I can't see anyone who is genuinely trying to live their life in a Christ-like way having a problem with people celebrating th those things in a secular way. So yes, I think anyone can celebrate Christmas. I think you can celebrate it in a secular way because it is mostly these days about meeting your family, doing good deeds, eating chocolate. I'm not sure what that part's about or where that came from. Candy canes? No idea. These are not the fundamental aspects of Christmas that I'm interested in personally, but if you know, uh, let me know in the comments where candy canes and shit came from. So okay, can non-Christians celebrate Christmas? Yes, definitively, easy. Something less prevalent, but in my opinion even more interesting, a question that crops up from time to time around this time of year, should Christians be celebrating Christmas? Obviously my personal answer is going to be the same as the one I just gave, because yes, everyone can celebrate Christmas. But I think getting into the why of the question is actually very interesting. Christmas is basically the biggest celebration in the world. It's gotta be the biggest religious celebration that, that there is, surely. And yet, it's not supposed to be the biggest of the Christian celebration. It should be coming after Easter, Epiphany, celebrating the, uh, the baptism of Jesus, amongst other things, uh, Pentecost. Those things should all be more important, but Christmas is, is just, it's just bigger. Historically, early Christians did not celebrate the birthdays of anyone, really, any martyr, including Jesus Christ. One reason is that the date of his birth was disputed, and it's hard to have a celebration when you can't agree on when exactly the celebration is meant to be. Now, the death and resurrection, huge deal. Jesus' birthday? Nah, Jesus never celebrated his birthday in the Bible. This is the reason that Jehovah's Witnesses, even today, don't celebrate birthdays at all, including their own. Because birthday celebrations have pagan origins. It was all about the death. Very morbid, early Christianity. Very morbid. Still kind of is, actually. Obviously, there are lots of things that the Bible doesn't mention because it's not really a catch-all for everything that life entails, but I guess some, some religious groups take that more seriously than others. As I mentioned in my previous to last video, the one before the last video, if you see what I'm saying, it turns out answers in Genesis are our favourite Young Earth fundamentalist charity organisation, uh, has asked the same question, should Christians celebrate Christmas? And I am intrigued to see how much of the origins of Christmas they go into. Don't know why I said into in such a strange way, it just kind of came out weird. <laughs> so I thought we'd use that as a talking point. I'm assuming they are going to talk about, just because there are the be these basics that we already know, that there are lots of pagan origins of Christmas, I assume they're going to dip into that, so maybe we can expand on that and learn a little about, bit about the uh, pagan, the Roman origins of Christmas. I assume they're going to talk about the fact that early Christians didn't celebrate the birth of Jesus. I assume basically they're going to touch on everything I just have. My conclusion from those things is that it doesn't matter, Christians should be able to celebrate 
Christmas. There's nothing in the Bible that says don't celebrate Christmas. And A, it's become increasingly secular anyway, so you can celebrate it non-religiously. And B, if you do believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour, it seems like he wouldn't mind if you celebrated the day of his birth, right? Like, I can't see him having an issue with that. Unless you're a Jehovah's Witness, they believe it displeases God. It's not clear why, except for extrapolating from minimal mentions of birthdays in the Bible. If you are or were a Jehovah's Witness, or you happen to know any, uh, add more details in the comments, because I am intrigued by uh, the hatred of birthdays. Because I'm, I'm aware of there being a couple of birthdays celebrated in the Bible by non, uh, non-believers. And that, as far as I can tell, is the only sort of reasoning... Like, otherwise, they don't mention birthdays, but they don't mention, like, going to the toilet and stuff in the Bible either, so I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> let's watch this Answers in Genesis video and talk about Christmas and have a lovely time. Oh, I might have to take off my Christmas hat. I wonder if my Christmas hat will fit over my headphones or if that will be completely silly. No. <laughs> no. So, I'm not sure if I'm losing my marbles or if the title has changed, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't... This video is called Is Christmas Pagan? I'm pretty sure it wasn't... I thought it was called Should Christians Celebrate Christmas, but maybe I'm confusing that with another video title. Could just be me. I'll, I'll have to check later. So is Christmas pagan by answers in Genesis? The description. Does Christmas actually have pagan origins? Should Chris Christians say happy holidays? When was Christmas first celebrated? This video answers all of those questions and more. We are listening to Bodie, Ho Bodie Hodge. I really, my brain just saw the words and wanted to say Bodie Hoagie. I'm so sorry. We're listening to Bodie Hodge and Rob Webb talk about Christmas. Okay, uh, because I, I think that this, the, part of the reason that I'm sort of intrigued by the fact that the the title is, is Christmas Pagan is because I think that's kind of a mistake. Because Christmas, by definition, is not pagan. Yule is pagan. If the title was, does Christmas have pagan origins... It would kind of make sense. But this title alone is kind of a, well, no, Christmas is Christian. Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ as a Christian celebration. That just seems like a mistake to me. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> surprisingly, I don't always agree with answers in Genesis. So maybe we're just, maybe we just vibe different on this. Okay, here we go. Is Christmas pagan? Is Whoa. Christmas pagan? Yeah, that's the question that we're covering today. Is that? I guess we'll find out in a minute. Is that his real accent or was he doing a voice when he went, is Christmas pagan? We're seeing every year those same questions coming up. Is Christmas just a pagan holiday? God, I love stock footage. I love shitty stock footage. Oh, they should we even be celebrating Christmas? You know, I hear that a lot, you know, especially things like the Christmas tree. Oh. He was doing a voice. He's American. <laughs> it's Christmas pagan. I don't know why he did it in like a weird Scottish accent, but as a mostly Scottish person, who's not really, I approve. <laughs> what an amazing start. That's pagan. You guys, you should just lock yourselves in your house and mm -hmm. just forget about Christmas. Tell me, what do you think? It really goes back to this whole, just in terms of our culture today, you think about the West, right? We were predominantly a biblical culture, a biblical worldview for so long. And then recently we've been shifting. Why was that? Why were, why, why are we predominantly a, a biblical? N nobody like forced that on anyone, did they? I don't think so. <laughs> to that secular worldview and so we've been seeing things like happy holidays you know trying to replace merry christmas and we've been seeing ex uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry dear i don't know which of these men is which they've not had like an interview card i guess i'm expected to know shall i look them up so i can i can um then i can address them properly okay the guy who did the accent is bodie hodge so this must be rob webb i bet if i type rob webb it's going to come up with robert webb yeah it is brilliant writer and comedian not the gentleman we're talking about so this is rob rob Darling, no offence intended. A little bit of offence intended, if I'm being honest. Anyone who says that people, they, society, you know, who, whatever other is out there trying to destroy Christianity, uh, are trying to eliminate saying Happy Christmas by replacing it with Happy Holidays, and, and is saying that without irony, without taking the piss they're fucking stupid that's an <laughs> that's a dumb as rocks i only read the daily mail level boomer opinion sorry but it nobody's to i say happy christmas if you want to especially piss off the um fundamentalist in your life uh who really thinks that they're taking away christmas by forcing people to say happy holidays you can get this uh satanic happy holidays jumper at emma-thorn.com Nobody's taking away Christmas. I say both, and I'm not even Christian. Lots of people say both. 
I see people say happy Christmas everywhere. The the only difference is that happy holidays is there as a more friendly and encompassing alternative in case you talk to somebody who doesn't celebrate Christmas. If you say happy holidays and that person celebrates Kwanzaa, you've covered all your bases and been polite. Nobody's trying to destroy Christmas, we're just trying to be polite. This is a problem for Rob. Xmas to try to take Christ out of Christmas, no surprise. <laughs> Nobody's saying Xmas to try and take Christ out of Christmas. It's just a stupid shortening. That's probably an American thing, because Americans like taking letters out of words. Colors are spelt with a U, okay? Is that they're also trying to say that Christmas is just a pagan holiday, we shouldn't bother with it. Just think of the name Christmas. You know, Christ Mass. It doesn't mean Mass. What it means is Christ celebration. Yeah, so right there. It yeah, I, I said that when I looked at the title of the video. Of course Christmas isn't pagan. Christmas is celebrating the birth of Christ. That's basically obvious. <laughs> I should tell you, it's not a pagan holiday. I love their tiny teeny Christmas tree. I do really love their tiny teeny Christmas tree. It's friggin' adorable. It's a celebration of what Christ did. And that's one of the things that we have failed in our culture is remembering the reason for the season. We, we get so wrapped up. He's the reason for the season. They said it. I love that phrase. It makes me laugh. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. See what I get there. Ah. I know. We get so wrapped up with the Black Friday deals, with the office parties, Ugh. with the Christmas breaks, you know, kids are off from school. But so many times we forget what the real reason of Christ was, that Christ stepped into history to then pay the ultimate price for our sin. But again and again, you know, around this time we're always getting- Well, yeah, but he, he stepped in to pay the ultimate price. Paying the ultimate price is Easter. So, you know, people have kind of got a point there. Just if you're gonna make that argument that we're, we've got to celebrate him because of his sacrifice, then that's that's what Easter is for, my dude. And Easter is a, is a more important celebration to Christians. It's supposed to be. Getting those same questions, is Christmas a pagan holiday? When people- No, it's, you're asking the wrong question. Does Christmas have pagan origins? Yes. Did historic Christianity adopt pagan celebrations? to make Christmas more accessible, to make more people celebrate Christmas? Yes. That is a different question. Asking, is Christmas pagan, is fucking stupid. Because you're saying, is this Christian holiday non-Christian? No, obviously not. You're asking the wrong questions and acting like the answer's obvious because it is. Answers in Genesis are infuriating. They're really infuriating. People say that though. I hate this laptop on his lap situation. It looks like it's about to fall off. It's giving me anxiety. When they say, hey, uh, Christmas is pagan, do we ever test them on it? Like, okay, well, what pagan holiday? You know, I've actually looked it up. It oh, hold on. I was about to jump in. I, th I thought he was giving me a test and I was going to take this opportunity to talk about the pagan origins of Christmas, but Bodhi's going to tell us. You know the one that would pop up the most? Saturnalia. Mm -hmm. They would say, oh, Christmas was born out of Saturnalia, this old Roman pagan holiday. Do you know what date it was? Yeah, so it was December 17th to the 23rd, so it doesn't even overlap with Christmas to begin. It's not even the same date. <laughs> it's two whole days different. Are they trying to say, because this is, this is, again, this is a stupid tactic, because what they're doing is they're trying to, they're, they're trying to erase their own history, their own faith's history. Christianity did try to adopt other other seasons holidays like it happened with halloween all hallows eve was a i mean we talked about this at halloween but th that was a christianity adopting pagan celebrations because people were already committed to celebrating at that time of year and so it was easier for them to encourage christian celebrations it's the same with Christmas. Pretending that's not true is just erasing your own faith's history. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, it's not even, it was the 17th to the 23rd. So Saturnalia had nothing to do with it. Yeah, of course it did. It was a couple of days difference. The point is that people were already celebrating at that point in December. We'll start with Saturnalia. Saturnalia is not the beginning, but because that's the thing that popped up most when Bodhi searched for it, I guess we'll start with Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a Roman holiday uh, season, Rome, obviously winters weren't as harsh as in, uh, you know, places like Scandinavia, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, they celebrated Saturn Saturnalia. It was a celebration of the god Saturn, who is responsible for agriculture, very important to the Romans. It began in the week leading up to the winter solstice and continued for a full month. While the official dates may have been the 17th to the 23rd, the sort of it was Roman, so it was very hedonistic. The sort of feasts and celebrations and whatnot went on for an entire month. Everything went fucking mental in Rome, basically. That's not the historian's 
uh, <laughs> explanation. But it basically did. They even, um, they freed enslaved people and let them live as equals for a month. And everyone was drinking and it was crazy. A good time was had by all. Businesses closed, schools closed. It was, yeah, you can, you can certainly see a lot of influences of Saturnalia in modern Christmas celebrations. There's more of the video left, so there's time, but um, Bodhi hasn't mentioned this yet. Uh, as well as Saturnalia, Romans also celebrated Juvenalia in December, or around the winter solstice. Juvenalia was a feast honouring the children of Rome. Members of the upper classes in Rome celebrated Mithra on, guess when? December 25th. Mithra was apparently the god of the unconquerable sun. Mithra's birthday was the most important celebration in the Roman calendar at the time, the 25th of December. So for Bodhi to be like, well, Romans celebrated Saturnalia, which is not on the 25th, he's just ignoring the more important celebration that was on the 25th. <laughs> Let's talk about Yule quickly. In Scandinavia, the Norse celebrated Yule from December 21st, the winter solstice. I'll put a bunch of links down below as always. This is interesting from uh, history.com. In recognition of the return of the sun, fathers and sons would bring home large logs which they would set on fire. The people would feast until the log burned out, which could take as many as 12 days. The Norse believed that each spark from the fire represented a new pig or calf that would be born during the coming year. At this time in the winter in Europe, a lot of cattle and stuff were slaughtered so that they wouldn't have to be fed through the winter, which made it a great time for feasting and celebration. And, more importantly to a lot of people, all the beer and wine that had been made earlier in the year was now fermented and ready to drink. In Germany, people honoured the pagan god Odin during the midwinter holiday. Germans were terrified of Odin as they believed he made nocturnal flights through the sky to observe his people and then decide who would prosper or perish. Because of his presence, many people chose to stay inside. Cool. Freaky. There's an air of Krampus about Odin. I have more to say about Christianity adopting uh, pagan celebrations or at least having their celebrations at the same time of year. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that Bodhi and, and Rob will go into that because they've been very brief so far and there's a lot of video left so let's get back to the lads Inland. it's not even close and we also have soul invictus that's the other claim right that they, that they mm -hmm. always say that christmas was based on that but really if we actually look at when when, when was soul invictus so, yeah soul invictus here's when it began ad 274. now we have records of christians celebrating christmas prior to this time so really if you think about it soul invictus was likely a, just a pagan alternative for, for, was, for, yeah. for christmas i don't want to start any beef or nothing, but I mean, the way he's worded it means that he's not technically wrong, which is a very sneaky little tactic uh, answers in Genesis like to employ. So they're, they're sort of right. Mithras, Sol Invictus, it, it was a, a Roman cult that wasn't adopted into official religion until it was 274 AD that the Emperor Aurelius made the Mithras cult uh, official, an official part of their religion. But it existed before then. Likewise, while some Christian sects, many of which probably would have been considered heretical, might have celebrated Jesus's birth before Christmas became Christmas, Christmas did not exist as a Christian celebration on the 25th of December until Pope Julius I chose it. That was in the 4th century. He died in 352 AD. I'm not sure exactly when uh, he made the 25th of December an official celebration of Jesus' birth. Uh, but but yeah, however you look at it, the Mithras worship came came first. It was official first. There might have been some Christians celebrating Jesus' birthday just as earlier than uh, whatever, 247 AD, there were Roman cults and groups worshipping Mithras. Unless you've got a magic time machine that can prove that there was some kind of majority Christmas celebration about Jesus before they knew of Mithras. Um, just, it's, that's just not true. It's just very close to fake news, I will say. We well, you know another one is the winter solstice. So I've had people say, hold it, Bodhi Christmas came out of the, the winter solstice. Uh, you know. Now, the winter solstice is just, oh God, Bodhi. I fear for Bodhi and his research skills and whatever else he's doing on Answers in Genesis because he's either being deliberately obtuse and wrong in the way that he's saying things or he's just bad at research. I'm not sure. The winter solstice 
is the point at which either of the Earth's poles reaches its maximum tilt away from the sun. It's not a religious thing on its own. Many cultures celebrated the winter solstice. Those Roman and pagan and Norse traditions that we looked at were celebrated at those times of year because of the winter solstice. But the winter solstice itself is a, a planetary phenomenon. It's not a religious thing. It's not... that that doesn't make sense. Here's the, th here's the thing and here's where it becomes problematic and confusing for me because I don't know what they're trying to get at here. If you just say, no, there were no pagan origins of this and that and the other, it, Christianity was celebrating the birth of Jesus, you know, long before it was even made official, it was always going to be in December for specific reasons. But there's never... the, the I don't know if we'll talk cover this in, later in this video, and I'll regret mentioning it now, but um, Jesus' date of birth is never mentioned in the Bible. Many people think that it was probably in the spring, because why would you be herding in, in, and shepherding in the winter? The fact is, December 25th was chosen by Pope Julius I. It wasn't chosen by the historical record. It was a date picked that happened to be the date of a very important Roman celebration and very close to some other pagan celebrations at that time of year. It was a popular time of year to celebrate. I, I don't understand what Christians would gain from denying that. It, it doesn't make any sense. You know, and then, but at the same time, winter solstice, it ends by the 23rd. It's usually the 21st, 22nd are the most common dates for that, so they would still miss it. But whether... Again, he's just, he's just using this. They weren't on exactly December 25th. While he's deliberately avoided the big celebration that was on December 25th, that's just dishonest. That's just plain dishonesty. It's either dishonesty or stupidity, and I'm leaning towards the former. Whether Christmas actually falls within a pagan holiday time frame really is irrelevant. Just take for example here, let's say you're taking communion on a Sunday and it happens to fall on a pagan holiday like Halloween, for example, which is predominantly pagan. We've done this. We've talked about Halloween. I've even mentioned it in this video. I'm not going into it. I think I have those same plastic spiders. Are you going to not take communion on that day because of that? And then the big one I'm sure everyone's wondering about is what about the... That's kind of a good point. Like, that's what I mean when I'm saying, like, it doesn't really matter what your religion is, whether you celebrate or not, because you could have, because you could have people celebrating the Christmas season at the same time as Jewish people are celebrating Hanukkah, etc. Like, it kind of doesn't matter, right? kind of agree with Rob on that one. The Christmas tree. Oh, the Christmas tree. Isn't that just a pagan astro pole that we're sitting here celebrating? Yes, over? in fact, I've had people bring up Jeremiah 10. I just noticed, I'm sorry, this is a beautiful, this like fits perfectly with the aesthetic of each gentleman. I wonder if they've done that on purpose or if this is just how they are. Rob has his laptop dangerously dangling off of his lap. Bodhi has a clipboard. Tag yourself, I'm Bodhi. I also have a clipboard. But mine's fold out and has useful uh, you know, pockets and things. Mine's better, is what I'm saying. I love that. He's compiled his research onto a clipboard, even though his research seems to be, I googled it and the top thing that came up was this and it wasn't even on December 25th. That's the, his level of research. And then when I talk about, oh, well, these people, uh, you know, they're bringing trees into their house in here. Let me actually read it. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. So people say, look, they were bringing trees in and they were worshiping it and worshiping these false gods. And th they say that's what Christians are doing when they bring a Christmas. Tree in. Yeah, but just based on the passage you just read, it's not the tree itself, it's the hearts of the ones that were actually bowing right. down. They were using it for that false idol worship, really. So right. it wasn't the tree itself, it was the heart of the man. Like right, yeah, it wasn't the thing they were saying. In, in the laws of the Bible where it says you can't uh, mix different types of fabric together, it's about the heart of the person that wants to do that. So if you, you can do it if the heart is just... Come on. That's a little bit of bullshit, isn't it? Isn't that a little bit of bullshit? God is very explicitly clear on idol worship. So if you're going to make that argument, I'd say don't. But the fact is, it's just a tree. It's just a fun decorated tree. Nobody in the modern day is worshipping it, so who the fuck cares? Nobody is bringing a tree into their home and worshipping it. The reason people say that it's, it's, it's pagan and blah 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 is because it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. People still do that. Christians still do that today because it's a fun thing to do with your family. And you can make it religious. You can use 
you know, angel ornaments and things. There's lots of ways to make a tree a sort of more religious thing. Um, and it can be completely secular. The point is it's just a tree and it's just fun. So I guess I agree with them. But they're kind of misusing the Bible to, again, sort of deny the pagan aspect. And I don't know why. It's just some fun facts about trees and things at Christmas. For many ancient peoples, evergreen boughs reminded them of all green plants that would grow again when the sun god was strong and summer would return. Ancient Egyptians worshipped a god called Ra. At the solstice, when Ra began to recover from his illness, the Egyptians filled their homes with green palm rushes, which symbolised for them the triumph of life over death. Early Romans obviously celebrated Saturnalia, that was to do with the god of agriculture. The solstice meant that soon farms and orchards and things would spring back to life and start being fruitful again. So to mark the occasion, they decorated their homes and temples with evergreen boughs. In Northern Europe, in Northern Europe, <laughs> in Northern Europe, Druids, uh, the priests of ancient Celts, uh, decorated their temples with evergreen boughs as symbols of everlasting life. Vikings in Scandinavia thought that evergreens were the special plant of the sun god Balder. The modern Christmas tree tradition seems to be credited to Germany uh, in the 16th century when devout Christians brought decorated trees into their homes. Some built Christmas pyramids out of wood and decorated them with evergreens and candles if wood was scarce. So there you go, history seems to credit the sort of official start of this specific tree tradition to Christians anyway. So what's Robin Bodie's problem? Like the Bible says, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Right, and if you understand what was going on in these ancient pagan cultures, what they were doing, they were cutting down the tree, they weren't just taking the tree in. Remember, it went to the craftsmen. What did the craftsmen do? Well, they used the axe, they cut it all up, and guess what? They formed it and they shaped it into their little gods. They put silver and gold on them. You had to carry them around, dust them off, put them up on your shelf. So it goes to show you they were worshiping actual idols. It had nothing to do with the tree. And if you think about the flip side, I don't know if that's always strictly true. I'm just going to blast past it. And, you know, if they were using it maybe to the glory of God, to honor God, we wouldn't be seeing this issue at all. So you think about it today, people, Christians setting up the Christmas trees in the houses, they're not using it to bow down to false idols. <laughs> not at um, all. But really, that's basically exactly what I said. We agree. Really, the way I look at it is we should be taking it back. We should be taking back these things and using it to the glory of God. To the glory of God. This is actually a great teaching moment, you know, in right. terms of if you're, if you're a parent, if you're a Christian parent, you can... This would have been such a great opportunity for them to include the, the historic start of the tradition in Germany, where it was Christians bringing trees into their home. Wouldn't that have been a brilliant point for them to make? Who is in charge of research for answers in Genesis? use the Christmas tree to then illustrate some of these right. different themes of Christmas and Christ and for example you have the ornaments right you said. can say the ornaments are essentially the followers of Christ and the tree represents Christ where the ornaments have to stick to the tree stick to Christ in order to have any value because without that they're going to be useless the ornaments are just going to be <laughs> okay you've lost me <laughs> you fucking lost me mate on the ground, they're not going to have any purpose. And of course, you have the star on top. You can talk about the star of Bethlehem. You can talk about Jesus being the morning star. And there's so many different teaching moments you can use with the Christmas tree, plus with yeah. the lights as well. You can talk about Jesus being the light of the world. If you just look at the tree itself, this goes back to an old German tradition. They would bring these in to represent they did it. life. You know, here it Apologies. is. Apologies. You know, if you've ever been to Germany in the wintertime, which I've not, but in North America, it's very similar, <laughs> right? Uh, if you've ever been to Germany in the wintertime, I mean, come on. I mean, I haven't, but. <laughs> Um, you know, it can be cold, it can be pretty miserable. And they cut down these evergreen trees and they bring it into their house and they do that to represent life. You know, just saying, hey, even though winter's here, there's life. And you know, here we are in a sin cursed and broken world. And yet here's Christ who is ultimate life. That's who we cling to. And then the other one we hear all the time is, well, should Christians even bother with celebrating Christmas? I mean, in the Bible, Jesus Christ never said we should honor his birth, right? Mm -hmm. we know here we go, here we go. It's gonna be fundamentalist Protestants versus Jehovah's Witnesses. I actually looked that up, but uh, Ephraim the Syrian, about AD 300, points out that everyone honors the day of their birth. What did he say? Did it cut out a word, or did I miss it? Never said we should honor his birth, right? Mm -hmm. We know, I actually looked that up, but uh, Ephraim the Syrian, about AD 300, points out that everyone honors the day of their birth. And there's good reason. Everyone on earth, the day of their birth. I'm, I'm thinking that probably he said celebrates, or, or has, or something, and they just accidentally cut it out in the edit. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, everyone... Everyone on earth is born. This is true. Reasons for it. First off, it represents adulthood. You know, like when you move from a child to an adult, there's actually different phases and stages for, you know, being Well, yeah, but when the baby Jesus was born, he was still a baby. Able to go into the military. You have to be a certain age to do that, to pay your taxes. You have to be a certain age. And you know, the Bible has always been adamant about- I... What? 
What has being a certain age to pay your taxes got to do with celebrating birthdays in the Bible? Bodhi's kind of lost me again on this one. Ages and, and how old people were. You know, even the very first man, Adam, he died at 930 years old because he kept track of how old he was. And, you know, there are a couple of instances in script. That's right, Adam died at 930 years old. We're going to bring that up casually and pretend that it's true and nobody's going to say a single thing. Scripture where birthday celebrations were actually mentioned and uh, they weren't always great people, you know, Herod, for example. But that doesn't mean other people. That's the Jehovah's Witness argument. The, the occasions where, which makes me still surprised that they bring it up because yeah, the, the occasions where birthdays are celebrated in the Bible, it's by bad, it's the bad guys that's uh, celebrating their birthdays. So it's interesting to mention weren't doing it as well. I was just thinking about the fallacious nature of that claim that, you know, Christ never said we should be honoring his birth, but he also never said we can't, that we shouldn't. And the That's also basically what I said. Like, it, th there's no rule in the Bible that says you shouldn't. There's nothing remotely that says you shouldn't. Th there's, there's nothing to suggest that celebrating a birthday is bad in the Bible. Apologies to Jehovah's Witnesses, but that's just kind of bullshit. Have a little cake and a card. Like, it's not... God doesn't care. Your salvation does not rest on whether or not you have a cupcake on your birthday. In the first place. So Rich for me to say I know because I don't believe in salvation or God. Sorry. So you see that double standard there. And even we have the angels celebrating the event. We have the, them. The actual night. We have the actual <laughs> night. And they were, right. they were praising and saying all these great things. And right. You look at Luke chapter 2. verse. The, the birth of Jesus was a huge deal in the Bible as well. This is, this is also, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm really with them on this one. Like, if you're talking about important moments in biblical history and important moments regarding the saviour, like, his birth was a huge fucking deal. There was all this prophecy around it, there were angels there, it was like a, it's a massive thing. There is a reason it's a big celebration, it's the birth of the saviour. There are more reasons to celebrate it than not, in my opinion. Verse 8, the angels announced to the shepherds, hey, in Bethlehem, the child has been born, go worship him. I always try to remember, I always try to remind people, you know, we shouldn't be just remembering and honoring Christ on Christmas. We should be doing it every single day of the year. So why not also celebrate Christ on Christmas? You know, I think of Colossians 2 verses 16 and 17. Let no one judge you in food or in drink regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are shadows of things to come, but the substance is in Christ. You know, we have that freedom in Christ. See, freedom is a Christian thing. In fact, his rights are a Christian thing. Wow. Oh, wow. That was a bold claim. I wasn't expecting it and I don't know what to do with it. Freedom is a Christian thing. Rights are a Christian thing. I feel like this is just sort of the, <laughs> this is just kind of the, the West has always been Christian and therefore everything in our modern society we can thank Christianity for. I feel like it's just kind of that. I don't even know where to, that's a whole, that's another video on its own. Freedom and rights are a, are a Christian thing. That's, I don't know what to, Bodie's throwing me for a loop here. Bodie's making this a real roller coaster. <laughs> too. And you know, the world constantly borrows these types of things. They borrow holidays. I love holidays. I, I, I love holy days, you know, and, and the world borrows. Well, the world loves those. I was going to you know, say the, the atheists. Sometimes gift giving. People, why people give gifts? Well, that actually goes back to the wise man. I mean, bringing gifts to the Lord, of course. Again, I don't want to rain on Birdie's parade. Yes, the, the Christian tradition of gift giving on Christmas is very simply traced back to that story wherein the, the wise men gave gifts they arrived with gifts for the newborn to celebrate that's 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 perfectly reasonable and correct saturnalia going back to rome saturnalia involved private gift giving as well after the feasts and all their the, the, the wild party times uh they exchanged private gifts and again much as bodhi tried to sort of like half pretend that saturnalia didn't come first it, it, it did saturnalia was there before christmas it doesn't matter because christmas gift giving traditions you know, have their own unique origin that makes perfect sense, but it it was also, th it, it's not exclusively Christian. Like, rights and freedoms. <laughs> Christ is the ultimate gift himself. We're also in a culture where a lot of people have been influenced by the world. I remember, I actually... Uh... We live in a society. This is like, the culture is like the number one secret language, like, red flag for these kind of Christians. All of them do it. Listen, like, Watch a Girl Defined video and take a shot every time they mention the culture. You will be wasted in five minutes. Actually, don't do it because it's bad for your health and I don't want to be advocating for that.
Uh, was, was bringing an atheist to church one year. Uh, he came out to visit me as a guy I knew from college, and uh, you know, we had a great time. But I remember us going to church, and you know, he was excited to go to church, you know, even though he was definitely not a Christian. And uh, we go in there, and I remember the, the sermon. The pastor came up right away, and he said, all right, let's go to the foundation of Christmas. And of course, he goes in the New Testament, so he really wasn't hitting the foundation of Christmas. Um, there was so much Christianese, if I can say it, in the sermon that he was struggling to understand. I'm sitting there trying to explain things to him. But I still remember the question that he asked me after that. He's just like, you know, if God is perfect, why didn't he make the world perfect? And I thought, he did. That, I had to explain that. He did. He made it perfect. He's like, well, why is He did. It's just he made people not perfect. Wait. No, no. He made everything perfect, including people. Except he did... All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's almost like that fundamental aspect of Christianity doesn't make any sense. He made everything perfect. It was the fall that ruined the planet. Obviously, God created the conditions that allowed the fall to happen. This aspect, this aspect of Christianity, the fact that, and Answers in Genesis cling to this because they are literalists specifically, particularly about Genesis, which is one of the weirdest books of the Bible that I would say probably the fewest people take as literal. It's a really fun book to read, in my opinion. A lot of weird stuff happens. There's a lot you can gain from it metaphorically. But as soon as you have to take it literally, and you have to rationalise, honestly just read Genesis for the way God behaves. He doesn't know everything. He's walking around like, Adam, where are you at? What have you done? I feel like you're up to something. He doesn't know everything, he doesn't see everything, he's not like that at that point in the text. You then have to rationalise Genesis, if you believe in that as a literal, you know, factual account, you have to rationalise that with a perfect god, and you can't. The two don't go together. So you have to basically say that God in all his perfection created people with free will, and that free will that he gave them, they abused because I guess they weren't perfect, even though God made them and he made everything, and why didn't he make the world perfect? Well, he did, except he didn't because of humans. He gave humans, <laughs> he gave humanity the capacity to feel curious. He gave them curiosity. And then he put a tree down. He said, you've, you've got to be good. It's for, the only important thing is that you're good. Now, I'm not going to tell you what being good is. You have no concept of what good or bad means. Here's a magical tree that if you eat from it, you will know what good and bad is. But if you eat from it, I'll ruin the world. And you and every human that comes after you will live in a, a shitty version of my perfect world because of the rules that I imposed. It's impossible to rationalise. You cannot rationalise that from a literalist perspective. That's why answers in Genesis sound fucking crazy when they talk about those beliefs. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Let's get back to Christmas. Why is it so bad? You know, and I think sometimes we miss that. I think there's a lot of people been influenced by the world. They go out and they, they see all this death, this suffering, and they come into church on, on Christmas. Sometimes they show up twice, Christmas and Easter, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes we have this big opportunity to be able to answer these tough questions. Yeah. Why they don't. They can't answer these questions. They say because of the fall. Ultimately, depending on which church you go to, I suppose, ultimately these things, if God is perfect, these things are all the result of god's actions but if god's perfect then they and and loving and all loving and kind then they shouldn't have happened that you can't answer that question that's probably why <laughs> that's probably why most pastors don't waste their time trying to answer a question that cannot be answered with most christians that are not on this weird literalist fundamentalist level they have to boil it down to something like we just don't understand god god works in mysterious ways he is beyond human comprehension which is a far more sensical and reasonable answer than it was perfect it was just he made a thing that made it not perfect why did christ become the baby in the manger we don't start there let's go back to the actual foundation why sin came into the world in the first place and why we needed a savior that's a great point it, this this is the one time of the year it's a great opportunity where unbelievers are going to be going to church they're going to be going with their families they're going to you know they're going to be dragging into the yep. into the service why not start with the foundation start mm -hmm. back with genesis and like you were saying too many times start with genesis we love genesis take them to the ark take them to the creation museum buy a season ticket we promise it won't flood a lot of the churches they just go back to Matthew chapter 1 or Luke chapter 1 rather than going back to the beginning. To I think there's something a bit rich here in criticizing churches for talking about the birth of Christ during their Christmas celebrations. I feel like churches are pretty, pretty reasonable in doing that. 
I think these guys forget that most of the Christian world is not as hard focused, laser focused in on Genesis alone as they are. Most Christians aren't like that, bro. To actually explain why Jesus had to step into history 2,000 years ago. I feel left out not having my house. People say, well, why did, why did Jesus have to do it? They need to understand the theology behind it. I, I still remember thinking, you know, a lot of the Jews in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to a Messiah showing up. But their idea of a Messiah was not the Messiah, right? You know, they, they were thinking something smaller, right? They wanted a political leader to rescue him from Rome, for example, or rescue him from the Greeks or whoever it might have been. But they didn't realize what we really needed was to be rescued from God himself and the wrath of of God that is upon us for our- oh, But he was perfect and all-loving. So we need rescuing from God by God in human form. And this is the thing that always gets me about Christianity. If you if you take the book at, you know, you take the books, again, I think it's a mistake to take the entire Bible as one text, but if you kind of take the books at more or less face value, lots of aspects of, of God and of you know, the redemption story, the redemption of humanity, they're, they're kind of sensical, right? You have this god who is incredibly powerful and strong. He's one of many gods at the time, and he's incredibly jealous of other gods. Uh, he, he can be violent and wrathful. And then he comes to Earth in human form and develops an understanding for humanity and becomes more loving and compassionate and, and saves the people. That makes perfect sense. As soon as you say he's always been all loving and he's he's completely unchangeable, that is that's a fundamental thing. He he can never change in the slightest. He has always been how he is now. Then the Bible doesn't work. Suddenly the Bible stories don't make any fucking sense. And they could. They so easily could. But as soon as you get hung up on him being all powerful, all loving, perfect from you know his timeless existence to now, it doesn't work. I just think. I just think that's a shame and a mistake. Our sin. So the sights were set too low. When Christ became the babe in the manger, he didn't come in just to be a babe. He didn't come in just to live a perfect life. He came in ultimately to die on that cross. And it all goes back to Genesis. It goes back to when God created everything perfect. He created everything very good in the very beginning. But it was sin. It was Adam's disobedience that led to death for us. Mm, but God created Adam, didn't he? So how did he create everything perfect and yet create a human capable of sin? which then brought down the world. Do you see what I mean when I say these questions cannot be answered? It's because it's nonsensical. Biblical literalism is crazy. It's just crazy. Read the- I, I urge you, I encourage you, do it over Christmas. Do it as a Christmas celebration. Read the Bible cover to cover. There are lots of interesting stories in there. Okay, you can skip some of it, it gets fucking boring. Some of it is just lists of- especially the Old Testament where they're just listing the names of everyone born into a certain family. Some of it can get really fucking boring. Some of it's kind of irrelevant. Some of it's interesting and fun. Just- just read it cover to cover and see if the things that happen and the way God behaves and the things God does jive with the claims that people like this make about God. Because to me, it doesn't make sense at all. For us all, like it says in Romans 5, 12. Atheist tells everyone to read the Bible for Christmas. <laughs> That's a headline. <laughs> well, sin came into the world through one man, death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sin. Through one man. Created by whom? And so all creation was cursed in that moment. God was perfect, he made everything perfect. One of the things he made just happened to be capable of sin, which brought the world to its knees doesn't make sense moment but god in his mercy and his grace didn't leave us without hope he gave us that first messianic promise like it says yeah, in genesis, genesis 3 15 i will put enmity between you and the woman between your offspring and her offspring he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel and so that's really what it goes back to that's why jesus had to step into history to be able to reverse the curse to be able to restore and that's what we look right. and here's just a here's just a a, a sort of stupid, basic question. Why would God create a curse and at the exact same time be like, I'm gonna fix it. In years and years and years, I'm gonna fix it. I've already got it planned. What's the fucking point then? If he already knows exactly what's gonna happen, it, it, it's like, ah, oh, I just, I've decided in all my glory and all my loving wisdom to make people suffer for a specific amount of time. And then I'm gonna take it away. Doesn't make sense.
look right. forward to as Christians, to the new heavens and the new earth that will be right. one day restored. And that's why it goes back to even the Virgin Mary, when she was told by, by an angel that she would bear a son and that he would, they were to call him Jesus and he would save his people from their sins to fulfill that prophecy, Isaiah 7, 14. I love looking at the names of Jesus, actually. God himself manifest in the flesh to take on flesh to die on that cross because only God is in a position to take the infinite punishment from an infinite God. Yeah, only God can take the punishment that God laid down. It's almost like if you believe that, then everything is kind of fucking pointless. It's weird. It's weird. And then it gets into... Uh, then you have this weird dichotomy between... Uh, is there free will or is everything deterministic? If God can plan for this thing to happen in the future, then he knows and he knows everything that will happen. And it just, it, it's a, it's a whole fucking mess. As soon as you start to try and rationalize this type of fundamentalism, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. God, that's the reason why. But at least they're able to enjoy their Christmas trees and shit. That's the important thing. Jesus had to step into history to pay the ultimate price because, like the Bible says, Romans 6, 23. He had to step into history to pay the price that he set, making it all kind of redundant. The wages of sin is death. We've all earned those wages. And I'm even wearing the shirt today. You know, we've all sinned. We're all on, on the naughty list. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 says, no one does good, no, not one. So that's why Jesus had to step into history to then take the ultimate price for our sin. If only God was perfect and had created a perfect world, the perfect creation, then we wouldn't have any of this sin nonsense. Wait. ...and that we receive his righteousness when we repent and believe in Jesus now, Christ. Let, let me ask you this. Can there be pagan aspects and elements that Christians grab and borrow and bring into their Christian worship? We're well, it's kind of too late, Bodhi. There already are. You've just discussed how you're doing that with Christmas trees, even though they didn't really mention again, or at least not very much. They didn't really emphasize enough that the, the real Christmas tree origin was kind of started by Christmas trees. Started by Christmas trees. Started by Christians. <laughs> We've been going too long. I've started to get delirious. Yeah, you've, you've already asked and answered this question. We've agreed that it's fine. And it's too late because it's already happened. You're doing it. Look at, your, look at the way your room is decorated. Things get deviated and- You're wearing Santa hats. That's not Christian. <laughs> warped and destroyed. That's really the real critical issue here, and that's what really it's about. A lot of Christians nowadays are missing the actual biblical point of celebrating Christmas. They're focusing more on, you know, Santa Claus, uh, Rudolph, these talk no man, these magical elves, you know, and, and sadly that has now taken the focus on so many people's lives rather than like we were talking Christ. about yeah, the actual real. Well, if they're not Christian, then yeah. They're, they're celebrating in a secular way. They're not thinking about Jesus Christ because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't, it's not part of their lives. They're just secular. The reason of Christmas is celebrating Christ. It's not just the birth of Christ, like we were talking about, but Christ stepping into history and taking that ultimate. And, and, and even think of- No, stop saying that. That's what Easter is for. Easter already exists. Easter exists and is more important. Christmas is not, ab Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Christ. Stop pretending that by extension, it's also about, yeah, oh, fine, it's about celebrating Jesus as a whole, Jesus' life. But stop pretending it's about, therefore, his sacrifice, because Easter already exists. That's a thing. If it was about that, you wouldn't need Christmas, because Easter is already a thing. Santa Claus. I mean, Santa Claus uh, in today's culture is almost like... The Father Christmas. Thank you very much. You know, paganizing a great man, uh, Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus. Is that it's actually a corruption of his name? And of course, now he lives at the North Pole. He's the keeper of the naughty and the nice list. He can be everywhere at the same time. They're taking godly attributes and applying it to this godly man. We have a handful of resources here that are great for Christmas, actually. Uh, first, oh, the God. War on Christmas. There is a War on Christmas that's going on. Bodhi's written a book and he's going to advertise it to you right now. It's about the War on Christmas. I bet that's fucking awful. Maybe I'll read it next year. In our culture, a lot of aspects, a lot of people have forgotten who Christ is. We also have a little booklet called Happy Holidays. Ah, I love the title. You know, you can buy these in bulk, actually. Great little booklet. Talks about uh, all these different Christian holidays that are surrounding Christmas. Even your local church, you can stamp your local information, pass these out. I'm Bodie, and this is... Rocket Rob. We are... Rocket Rob? Is that actually... Is that... Is he trying to start that, or is that actually his answers in Genesis, sort of... Nickname. Our Biblical Authority Ministry, we love giving you guys answers for these type of questions regarding Christmas, but really we are rooted in the gospel. We're all about proclaiming the name of- You're rooted in Genesis, 
actually, you're not rooted in the gospel. That's one of the fundamental problems with Answers in Genesis is that they're hyper-focused on specifically the first book of the Old Testament. Weird. Weird! Well, there you go. That was uh, that was Bodie and Rob from Answers in Genesis asking the question, is Christmas pagan, which is redundant and stupid, um, but actually hitting a lot of the talking points that I wanted to cover. So we got to talk about the origins of Christmas. Yes, there were Roman and pagan celebrations that came before Christmas. December 25th was chosen as the date to celebrate Christmas by Pope Julius I in the 4th century. Now we're done listening to the lads, I can put my hat back on. My evil satanic black hat. I'll just read another snippet from history.com because I think this is sort of an important counterpoint to some of what Bodie and Rocket Rob were saying. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter... Win by holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be properly embraced, but gave up the ability to dictate how it was celebrated. It's a, it's a necessary and fundamental part of Christian history, the, the history of Christian celebrations at the very least, that the Christian church specifically adopted this time of year due to existing celebrations. It made it easier to convince people to celebrate Christmas. That's just reality, that's just fact. Denying the pagan origins of anything to do with Christmas, uh, especially because, you know, Saturnalia started on the 17th and, and, and went to the 23rd. It's not even on December 25th. Absurd. Absurd. Exactly the usual kind of bullshit that I would expect from Answers in Genesis, but at least we got to learn some stuff about Christmas and Christmas trees and talk about the festive season. And yeah, the fundamental point that I want to make is that anyone can celebrate Christmas however they want. It is largely secular. It's also very easy to adapt some of the traditions that maybe don't have Christian origins into Christian metaphors, just like they were saying in the video. You can make it as religious or as secular as you like. As long as you're having fun and you're not hurting anyone, who cares? It just doesn't matter whether you say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. Nobody with a rational mind gives a shit. Just have fun, be good, and that's all that matters. On that note, I would like to wish you a very happy holiday season and i would like to give a big thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on patreon Have yourselves a merry little Christmas or appropriate holiday season name here and uh, <laughs> I will see you very soon.